Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight. In fact, this will be the last Weapon Spotlight of the Locked and Loaded era. We'll have Steel Rain coming later this week, so uh, next week's Weapon Spotlights will reflect that we are in a new part of the game's history, so that when we go back and look at these videos, we have a little bit of context for what was going on at the time. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. Today we're going to take a look at an anti-armor explosive combat shotgun that I picked up on my purveyor run last week. So uh, we're going to see how this does. I am going to run it at low health with my uh, stealthy bloodied shotgun build. And we're going to see just how much damage we can do with this thing. I think it's going to be pretty good. As always, we're going to take a look at the weapon and the build I'm running, so you have a little context for that. And as always, I'm going to put timestamps there, so for those of you that just want to jump into the action, you can go ahead and do that. For those who want to go through and see all the details, you can do that too. Let's get started with a look at the weapon. And here it is, an anti-armor suppressed combat shotgun. So our first effect, we ignore uh, half of our target's armor. That is very useful because there is no armor penetration perk for shotguns. Now this one we also have a perforating magazine on to give us additional armor penetration, but because there's no armor penetrating perk for shotguns, that legendary effect is particularly useful. The big thing with shotguns is you get a lot of damage in one shot, but it all gets spread out among a bunch of projectiles that do smaller damage. And the way armor penetration works in Fallout 76 the lower your damage on a projectile, the harder it is for it to penetrate armor. So these effects are particularly useful on a weapon like a shotgun. We've also got exploding bullets, so we've got extra damage from that. And faster reload is going to help speed up our reload speed. We put on the hardened receiver for the highest damage possible. True long barrel, true short stock. I'd prefer a uh, full size stock, but I didn't have it available, so we'll work with what we've got. We're suppressed, we've got a reflex sight, you get the point. Let's take a look at mutations now. Here we've got, uh, this is my backup build on my bloodied stealth commando. So you've seen these before, I'm sure. We've got adrenal reaction for more damage at low health. Bird bones and marsupial so we can jump high and land softly. Carnivore so meat is more effective. Chameleon, which is totally useless in every way unless you're going to run around without armor. Eagle Eyes for more perception, better critical damage, and Egghead for more intelligence, which means more XP, Healing Factor so I can heal up automatically between fights, Scaly Skin for more damage and energy resistance, Speed Demon for faster movement speed, and uh, faster reload speed. And on this character I have Talons, that's not doing anything for us today. I'm also running Class Freak, so don't let the negatives on here fool you, they're really just a visual error. Uh, if you don't remember to swap the card in and out, they show up like that, but they're not actually happening. So uh, bear that in mind. All right, we get the point here. Let's go ahead and take a look at legendary perks. We start off with Ammo Factory, one of my favorite of the legendary perks because one of my least favorite activities is grinding for materials. So anything that means that uh, I have an easier time with that makes me happy. So this gives us more ammo when we craft ammo. Legendary Intelligence is almost maxed out. Eventually, I'll be able to max out Gunsmith and Demolition Expert at the same time, uh, but we've got uh, we've got a little ways to go there till we have enough perk coins to do that. After that, we've got Legendary Charisma, which is going to let us take more Legendary Charisma perks. But remember, it does not allow you to share more more perks. So uh, Charisma has that effect in your build, but not if you're doing it through the Legendary perk system. So bear that in mind for anyone out there thinking about doing this. Follow through is going to give us uh, the benefit that our enemies are going to take more damage after we land a successful sneak attack. That is particularly useful with any stealth build and with a weapon like this. It's more effective with non-automatic weapons. So anything like this where we have a non-automatic combat shotgun, um, you know, non-automatic rifles, seems to register right after that first shot with automatic weapons. It's a little tougher. Uh, it will eventually get there, but it seems like there's a little bit of a lag before it counts. Then finally, we round things out with legendary endurance, so we can take more endurance perks. 
and Legendary Luck, which lets me take more VAT's critical related perks. So we've seen all these before, I think we get the point. Let's jump into the special build and perk cards. So here we have it, this is, uh, this is my shotgun build that kind of rides uh, in the back seat of my bloodied self commando. This is the alternate build that we can swap to now with the new, uh, the new special punch card machine. So we've got strength at 14, we've got bandolier to reduce ammo weight, shotgunner perks are maxed out for more damage, and scatter shot so that our shotguns weigh less and reload faster. And then we've got uh, perception, we've got skeet shooter, that's going to give us a lot more accuracy with our shotguns. Concentrated fire lets me target limbs in vats and uh, get more accuracy with each missed shot. So that's very helpful with a weapon like this. Endurance at three. I've got Revenant at two and Radical at one. Uh, Revenant gives me more damage if I get revived during a fight. Not going to be a factor today as we're going solo, but uh, under normal circumstances that can come in handy. Radical lets me uh, get more strength the lower my health is, so. As long as we're gating our health with rads, we might as well benefit from that extra carry weight. Charisma at five lets me max out Lone Wanderer. That's going to give me, uh, that's going to make me take less damage, get better AP refresh. So those are two really good things if you're going solo. Strange in Numbers is on there because I don't have any other card at one point to swap in. So I just left it there, but it's not doing anything for us on a solo run. Intelligence we've got at 11. Here I've got Nerd Rage for more damage, AP regen, and damage resistance at low health. We are running at low health, so that's very useful. Demolition Expert's going to max out our explosive damage. And I've got three points of Gunsmith. Once I get that Intelligence Legendary perk maxed out, we'll be able to run both of those fully maxed out, and that'll be great. But for now, we got to live with what we got to live with. Agility at 15 lets me have uh, Adrenaline maxed out, so as I take on bigger mobs, I do more damage. Enforcer is going to give me a good chance to cripple enemies with a shotgun. Honestly, you can probably even get away with one point there, but uh, I kind of had it to play with, so I went with two. Uh, Gunfu maxed out means we're automatically target swap in VATS once we get a kill, and you get increased damage when that happens. Covert Operative for more sneak attack damage. Escape Artist so we can get away if we do get detected. And we have one point in sneak because uh, why not? There's one extra point we could have, and it might as well be in sneak, even though it's not a dire necessity. It, you could argue that I could put enforcer there, but I, I don't seem to have any trouble with two points of enforcer, so I'm good with that. Finally, under luck, we've got class freak and starch genes, so we can uh, keep all of our mutations and reduce their negative effects. We've got serendipity for a good chance to avoid damage at low health, bloody mess for extra damage, and then you'll see Psychopath, Four Leaf Clover, and Grim Reaper Sprint, a variety of VATS critical related and AP related perks that uh, will give me better chances at getting more VATS critical shots in a shotgun. That can be very useful. Uh, I do a little mix of VATS and hip fire accuracy today, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're going to play around with the weapon and see what we can do with it. It's definitely a good one. Let's jump over to the White Spring and start killing some things. And here we are, nice and sneaky. And yeah, okay, so Torso Shots didn't quite do it. Once we get Adrenaline built up, that'll do the job just fine. And yeah, there we go, okay. And as always, despite our loud explosions, nothing's waking up. Because, you know, ghouls are sleepy, I guess. All right, got some splash damage going for the legs. You can see the cripple there already. But uh, yeah, not a lot to worry about here. We did get a legendary. We'll take that. And how about you? Can we get your head? Not quite. Okay. I don't need your head. I can explode you all over the place without a headshot. There we go. So hip fire accuracy, once you've got some mods on here, is pretty good. We're not using any chems or anything to enhance that. It's looking pretty good. But uh, splash damage, while there is some effectiveness to it, you do really have to land your shot to make this weapon work. We're staying nice and stealthy, so we'll just let him run past. And there we go, and there we go, you're dead. Okay, so the benefit to this, if you are, if you are not using VATS when you have Enforcer, one of the nice benefits to shotguns is if you go for the legs, you will generally get cripples and slow down your enemies. While that is not 
particularly vital for a weapon in a build like this that's going to do a lot of damage. If you're an earlier level player and you kind of need a little extra help, that definitely is more useful. So you can see when they stagger like that, that generally means you cripple the leg, so they're not going to come rolling at you real fast. Use a little bit of gunfu action there for those torso shots. We're doing enough damage that torso shots are, uh, they do tend to get a kill right away. So we don't need to worry too much about targeting specific limbs. At least not on ghouls, they're nice and squishy. So we don't need to do a whole lot with them. And it does help though if your aim is good if you're not using vats. And my aim is not the greatest. Okay, let's uh, take you out with a couple of shots. So one torso shot and then some head two headshots and he's dead. We'll take that every time we can get it. And I've got a disease, but no disease cures. So we'll just have to live with that for a little while. Let's head on outside, see if there's anybody hanging out here that needs killing. And sometimes they sneak into the hallway. Not this time. All right, who's outside waiting for me? There you are. Oh, you were trying to get into the locked door, I see. Uh-huh, yep, that's what happens when you try to loot the White Spring. You get a shotgun blast, and you're dead. Okay, who's next? There's a headshot. There's a headshot. And anybody else? Yeah, we got some rad stags. Might as well go kill the rad stags. There we go. And there we go. We almost took out the uh, little one with just the splash damage. So, so far so good. Let's head to the deep and kill some commies. This should get a little more interesting as the Liberators are going to have more armor. Okay, there you can see kind of the the range deficit on a shotgun. You do have to be fairly close for a weapon like this to be really effective. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to be right on top of the enemy, but you do have to be fairly close. You can see that in the VATS accuracy there. I've got to get pretty close before I get over 50%. But fortunately, you do a ton of damage, so we're doing pretty good. But you can definitely see the damage drop off when you get a hit at longer range. These ghouls take uh, a lot of damage when you hit them in the head, though, so they're really easy if you go for the headshots. See what else we can do. There's another headshot. Look at that. And remember that 141 damage you saw? That is a stack of damage. That is a stack of eight pellets doing 141 damage. So we're definitely doing a lot of work here. Very, very useful indeed. But that number is so high because of the way these ghouls take damage. I assume it's a bug. Oh, and they're out here to get me already. All right, two torso shots and our power armor commander is dead. I'll take that every time. One torso shot and you're down. Anybody hanging out back here? No, looks like they came off to the side. So yeah, those two came from behind, and I'll take that. We're going to head up the stairs and look for our missile sniper eventually, but I saw another guy running around out here. All right, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I saw you, and now I don't see you. Do you have the ability to teleport into rocks? I think you might. Magical communist powers. Let's see if we can find him. Where, where did he go? Uh, now he's somehow over there. Okay. I'm pretty sure he teleported through the rocks. But now he's dead, so it's not a problem. All right, now we'll go upstairs and get the missile sniper. Then we'll head inside and clear out whatever's left. Do a quick little reload. And oh, look, you're waiting patiently for me. And now you're dead. Easy enough. So far, nice, uh, easy breezy little run here. Grab those stim packs. We'll head on inside and see what we can do here. So yeah, the commies are uh, the commies are easy targets. I don't come here so much because they're difficult as I do because I just really like the location. So they're easy targets if you hit them. And there we go. Let's head on upstairs. We should have a few more up here, including another power armor commander. And I do like how uh, I do like being able to see how this performs against an NPC in power armor that has some really good uh, damage mitigation. And there's a legendary. 
yet another reason to come to the deep because you do have a pretty decent legendary chance. Not all the time, but uh, you definitely get one. Oh good, a suppressor shovel with limb damage. I could not imagine asking for more. Let's go after a behemoth and some of his buddies. So here we are outside Bogtown where we always have a couple of tough creatures. So right now we've got anglers and anglers mean business. I'll tell you what, they are tough to take down, especially at level 100. If they can hit you with those fireballs, that really, really hurts, especially if you're running low health. So you want to be very careful of that. We've got one more over here who appears to be engaged with a super mutant. And the other thing, of course, is because they're engaged, our sneak attacks don't really work. So here's a one level 100 super mutant. Three shots will do the job. If we did some Vats headshots there, that would probably have been even more effective. But yeah, I'm going to start coming to uh, Bogtown a little more often in these videos because we can take down some super mutants and get the point of that. We can also take down a behemoth, and it's a behemoth that's already walking around, so we don't have to worry that... There, there we go. One shot. One shot to the head. That's what I'm talking about. One shot to the head on a level 100. And let's see here. We'll take one shot so we can kick on follow through. And now you can see the amount of damage we're doing there. This is highly, highly efficient because we're ignoring so much of their armor. That is very good indeed. Now we'll move on to the Fisher site. We'll take out some Scorched and their hive mind leader Scorch Beast. Okay, one headshot did the job there. So far, it looks like uh, this weapon is very, very solid. Let's pop a Radix Diluted so we don't lose too much health here to the Rads. And we got to get a little closer. You can see that range in action. That's the trade-off with a shotgun. You can get really high damage, but you do have to be fairly close. There you go. See, just come on up here. Come on down. I've got bullets for all of you. And there again is that range trade-off. So even though we had a pretty good VATS lock on, uh, the damage just falls off really hard at range. So you've got to get a little closer, which is fine. That's how shotguns would work. Shotguns are not super long-range weapons. So it makes sense to be close. I'd love to see some different uh, maybe ammunition types available, like a slug if we wanted to be a, a shotgun sniper. All right, Scorch Beast, enough's enough. I need your attention. Come on over here. All right, we'll cripple the wing. A few shots and vats usually do the job. There we go. And now he's going to land. See if we can take him out before he takes off again. All right, where you at? Where you at? I see your head there. All right, we're doing pretty... Oh, this stupid tree got in the way. And now a reload, so he's going to regen. Let's get that wing, get him back on the ground. All right, good enough so far. We'll just wait patiently here for, for our new little Scorch Beast pal to land. And it looks like he's looking for a spot. Back on the head. And now follow through is kicking in and we are doing great. So that is very, very effective damage. Oh, a Stalker's Grenade Launcher. Oh, that's perfect right there. That's the best roll in the game. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a new addition to the weapon spotlight, and that is uh, let's play tag with some Assaultrons. We're going to see how we do. Assaultrons are one of the tougher enemies in the game. They're one of the more dangerous enemies in the game. So there we go. We crippled the torso. Three shots down. So yeah, not too bad. But yeah, I like testing this because they're definitely more dangerous. It's an enemy that a lot of players do struggle with, especially if they're low to mid level they're a lot scarier so uh it's a good test to see see how a weapon can do all right uh oh i'm being a little overconfident here i have no health all right you are gonna die and headshots are not the way to go on assaultrons all right i know there's another one around here somewhere let's run it oh no <laughs> Okay, so got a little overconfident there, but vengeance will be mine. That Assaultron seems to be engaged with something over here. Let's see if we can cripple that head laser. That's done. 
So now we'll cripple a leg. So now she can't run after me. And there we go. And there we go. So that's the ticket with Assaultrons. Now, realistically, I could just hop on the torso, focus on the torso, pump a few shots and be done. But where's the fun in that? If you are a lower level player or you're on a build that isn't doing as much damage, then, you know, instead of killing them in three or four torso shots, you might need six or seven or even eight or nine, maybe even more. So if that's the case, then you you want to know to to uh, to cripple them like that. Now, what we did here was hit the combat inhibitor by hitting the combat inhibitor. This assaultron will now be hostile to any other robots or creatures it encounters. So we're just going to play with this one a little bit and see if we can get her to engage something else. And at this point, I know we're not even testing the weapon. Now I'm just screwing around, but you know what? It's fun. It's fun to screw around. Let's see if we can get another robot to spawn. We'll run in front of one of these pods. There we go. We'll let those two fight it out for a little bit. I think we see what the weapon can do. Let's just have a little fun. Okay, she seems interested in me, which doesn't make much sense. There we go. Now they should start fighting. There you go. Head laser to the Assaultron, or to the Protectron. And, oh, they're fighting it out. I'll tell you what. I thought, sure, she'd melt that guy in a second. Okay, she crippled him. She seems very interested in me again. So the Protectron is just crawling around slapping her. <laughs> There's that. Wow, really? Are you serious right now? The Protectron won? Who could have seen that coming? Definitely not me. Well, that settles it, ladies and gentlemen. No more whining about Assaultrons. If a crippled Protectron can kill one, then so can you. All right, now here we go for our last stop of the day. We're going to take out some Meyer Lurks. We've got a couple of kings here, and the reason I'm not shooting them is because they're running over to these blood eagles that are uh, that hang out here by this farm. So we want to kill them so that they're not going to be aggroed to anything, so our stealth shots will count. All right, but there is a blood eagle doing some work over there. Okay, so let's just uh, take him down. Come on, I see you there. Okay, now the crabs are all mine. Here's a Meyer Lurk King. Full health still. Follow through and headshots. So it helps if all the hits register. If all the hits had registered, they would have been he would have been dead in three shots. I'll take that every time we can get it. Alright, here are your buddies running around here. That one's almost dead, so easy enough. The shell is usually very good armor for these guys. And is he dead? Wow, really? I think that was all splash damage. They're definitely weak in the legs, so maybe the splash damage did the trick. All right, who else is hanging around here? It's tough to find them when they get scorched like this, especially they really blend in. All right, I know there's another king. I saw two kings. Let's just take a quick peek up here. We don't want to get surprised. All right, we got one out in the pond, and then we'll need to summon the queen. All right, there you go. So now you can kind of get an idea what kind of protection that shell gives them. But the anti-armor effect is blasting past a lot of that. If we didn't have that, it would be a lot less effective. And that's not the king. Maybe the king ran away. All right, so here's our range showing its uh, weakness. Very good. And I think it's time to summon the queen. Any old grenade in the pond should do the job. There she is. So the first thing I want to do is target those spouts so we can cripple them so she can't do that corrosive poison damage deal. And we hit the head and you can see it's not super effective. I found that the best way to hit the queen is the legs. Not only does it do a little more damage, but it also has a good chance to cripple them. You can see the body just doesn't do that much. So legs are the way to go. Yeah, torso shots. I mean, it does some damage, but the legs are really where it counts. We want to cripple those legs so she can't run after us. That's after crippling the spouts to protect us from the poison. 
Delta. There's a little bit of uh, method to my madness there, but I am not satisfied yet. I know there's a king around here somewhere. There he is. Moon walked away, got stuck in a crack. Oh, there you go. Now you're up looking around. I see you. I see you. All right, got our one shot down for follow through and dead in three shots. That is a thing of beauty. Let's talk conclusions. So the big question as always, is this weapon good? Well, I, I think if you just watched what I did, obviously it's good. Now, like all shotguns, its effectiveness is going to fall off a bit for big bosses like the Scorch Beast Queen or Earl Williams, but for everything else, it's extremely effective. It'll still be effective in those situations too, just not quite as dominating. What's really making this work is the anti-armor effect. We're getting a lot of mileage out of it just because of the way damage resistance is calculated in Fallout 76. Weapons like rifles that do a lot of damage per shot don't get as much out of an effect like anti-armor because the higher the damage you do, the more armor you essentially ignore. But on lower per shot or per projectile weapons, anti-armor goes much further, and that's exactly what a shotgun is. It's eight projectiles, so instead of the 336 damage per shot that we saw in the Pip-Boy at the beginning, we're really getting more like 42 per pellet. Even enemies with low damage resistance can ignore a lot of that damage, so a legendary effect that bypasses half their armor, coupled with a magazine mod that ignores even more than that, has a lot to offer. Without doing the math, especially running at low health, I'd say this easily feels on par with some of the bloodied combat shotguns I've played with, so if you're gonna go for a low health shotgun build, this is definitely a viable option. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we get the point. Wanna explode your enemies into a bloody paste with a weapon that feels like it should explode your enemies into a bloody paste? Then this is the gun for you. I hope you enjoyed this one, if you did, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, share it with your friends, follow me on Twitter, all the stuff that, uh, you know, you're supposed to do on things that you like. So, uh, yeah, we all get the point of that. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I see you next time. Till then, I'm Fisty McRib.